So there are people graduated from university who don't know how to make safe, financial, effective decisions. Honestly, don't be sad. There's people that go their whole entire lives and don't know how to make safe financial decisions. So don't worry. It's good that you actually took the initiative, first of all, to take that course because it's not yeah. mandatory. Mm -hmm. They don't teach it in the public education system. They don't teach it in the elementary system or high school. Mm -hmm. So it's good that, first of all, your school offered it because I don't think mine did. Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or an experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends and talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. All right, welcome to Bravi Table Talks, episode two, season four. I mean, it's version four, really. It's like, because <laughs> I keep scrapping the old ones, so um, too bad. we're starting over again. So today we're going to be talking about financial literacy and uh, something that's important to all of us here, how to save for your first down payment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a incredibly big topic for me, just because we haven't learned it in school growing up, and I haven't had my first financial uh, literacy course until up until high school or mid university, um, which is a shame because it was an elective. So I had to make that decision to actually take that course. So there are people graduated from university who don't know how to make safe, financial, effective decisions. Honestly, don't be sad. There's people that go their whole entire lives and don't know how to make safe financial decisions. So don't worry. It's good that you actually took the initiative, first of all, to take that course because it's not yeah. mandatory. Mm -hmm. They don't teach it in the public education system. They don't teach it in the elementary system or high school. Mm -hmm. So it's good that, first of all, your school offered it because I don't think mine did. Mm -hmm. uh, UFT didn't offer it, that's for sure. Um, so I had to, what I, how I started really was that book that I gave you two. Like, I guess, JP, you weren't on the team at the time, but now you are. I have an extra um, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki's book. It's oh, like I read that Bible. Book. You read it? Yeah. Inside Out? I that book, yeah. I read it in grade nine in like three hours at the uh, chapters. I sat there and just read the whole thing. It was beautiful. Great what did you learn from it? What did you, your takeaways? Uh, man, it was such a long time ago. I think one of my takeaways would definitely be uh, let money work for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And That's um, right. make sure you're saving your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just so, money. so really, at the end of the day, it's all about assets and liabilities, right? Like... The reason we do what we do in our field, in the real estate field, um, we have a lot of, I guess, clients that are doing really well and they leverage. And it's a common, like it's almost like infinite money, man. And this, this is the reason why the government's fighting inflation so much is because the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. And there's such a big divide. And once there's such a big divide, it's social unrest. It's like it's not good for the economy. It's not good for society, for that matter. So we have to fight it. And, I, and that's why I'm on board with inflation fighting, tricking the asset prices down a bit. So what actually happens is once you own your own home and your equity grows, you can just basically refinance that equity and do it again. And then do it again and do it again and again and again until the bank says no more. Mm -hmm. Right? But at that, at that point, you already like, you have more than enough money to sustain your living expenses. If you keep it low, your, your, your spending habits low. And you'd be good. Meanwhile, there's people out there that are struggling and can't get ahead because they don't have the down payment to put towards those assets, right? So this is why the rich keep getting richer and it's, it's a bad thing for society. But if you take that lesson and you learn about it and think about how Robert, like, did you read the book, Kayla? No, you uh, didn't. Still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know you got a lot to do, but like while you're in the car driving around, honestly, yeah. turn your car into a mobile podcast system and just pick up that. It's definitely one of those books, though. You have to read it. To fully understand the concepts, like trying to listen to it and not take notes or anything or just see the visuals. Because I know they have like diagrams of the different quadrants and stuff. That's a cash flow quadrant though. Yeah. That's like later on. But he does mention it. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it's okay. So anyway, at the end of the day, it's all about assets and liabilities. You let your assets make money for you so you don't have to work. You, you make money while you sleep uh, versus liabilities, right? Like you got to really know the difference between the two. You know, you might think your own personal residence is an asset. It's not. Robert Kiyosaki goes as far to say it's a liability because you're paying for living expenses, right? JP, you're living at home right now. Yeah. So that's, you don't have an expense. But once you're out and you own something, you're paying for that expense, which doesn't really go anywhere because you're always going to need a place to live. So that's why he treats it as a liability. So you think about that, um, it just frames your mindset around a little bit. I think financial literacy begins with investing in yourself first, investing in what's in here and your knowledge and your brain, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, don't put in Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying Bitcoin's bad. Like, whatever. It is what it is. What um, do you mean? My whole trading account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, invest in yourself. Like I was saying, any chance you get, I don't listen to music in the car anymore. And I remember my mentors, like, he was a little, he's a little bit older than me. But when I was younger, around your age, I had my stereo cr stereo cranking. You know what I mean? I had two 12s in the back, subwoofers, like, 
loud, just boom, boom, <laughs> boom. Crazy. I loved it, right? It just it was nice. It just felt good. It shakes your body and everything. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, I can't waste time listening to music. I only have so much time in the day. I got to learn. I'm, I'm on a mission to learn. Even at my age now, in my mid early 40s, whatever, I'm still trying to learn all the time. Picking up everything. That's why I know how to talk like you guys, like your kids. <laughs> it, it really is a compounding Sus. effect, though. <laughs> Things like that. It really is I mean? like a compounding effect. You gotta like keep the learning. more that you keep uh, getting yourself in that habit mm-hmm. of uh, constantly, you know, trying to open up your horizons, right? Um, yeah, it it truly affects your your financial like uh, um, income as well as decisions, right? Because the decisions you make are based on what you know. Mm-hmm. So in one of the chapters in that Rich Dad Poor Dad book, he, Robert Kiyosaki talks about how the best investment you can make is into your own brain, your own education. So um, like I was saying, don't invest in any stock or whatever. There's a hot trend. Invest in yourself first. That's the number one thing. Then after that, once you start building up financial know-how and you have more skills on making proper decisions, you get paid more, right? You can do better in your jobs. You you know maybe start your own businesses, whatever. You'll get side income, side hustles, things like that. Then all of a sudden income comes in. And then when you take that income, you invest it away, sock it away. Mm -hmm. So the way I would do it in your positions, I would slowly sock away a portion of your income every, like, I I don't know, I keep forgetting what percentage, but like start with 10%, 15% maybe, even 30% if you can go as high as that. Mm -hmm. But 10 to 15%, just keep socking away automatically without even looking at it. Mm -hmm. One of the other chapters in the book was um, pay yourself first. And it's funny enough because... I read this book in grade nine and I still remember the concepts, right? Like I haven't read it since, mm-hmm. but it's pay yourself first, right? Meaning that before you pay the government, like the CRA, I'm not saying that, but like, you know, <laughs> before you pay anything that you have to pay, make sure you make it a discipline to take that off the top right away, right? Put it into a, a money market account or whatever, like just automatic savings. I think your bank can do that for you yeah. Yeah. and just let it compound. Fill up your RSPs. So first of all, it's a tax benefit to you. But you can use it towards the purchase of your first home. You can withdraw from it, right? For the first time home buyer plan up to I think thirty thousand, thirty five thousand, forty. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's thirty five actually. 35 grand, and right? uh, yeah, that was, that was the frustrating part because I didn't really learn on that all, all the way up until second year university. Right. And then I didn't, and I completely forgot about it. And then learned it, relearned it with you and Botter talking about it. Right. And you know how frustrated I am with myself, just being like, I could have used that for free money, basically. <laughs> this is like this glitch. Of um, claiming it on taxes. Well, you guys are still young. You can yeah. still do it. Like mm-hmm. you still have contribution room, right? And you still like you like as you get older, your contribution room grows too, right? So just stuff money into it, mm-hmm. and then when you're ready to take it out, you have 15 years to pay it back. 15 plus one years to pay it back, I believe. So do that, and it has to be in there more than 90 days. So you can't just do it today and then go out and buy something tomorrow, right? It yeah. has to be there like minimum 90 days. Yeah, and, and that's the thing though, because people don't know where to put it, like. People have the concept of saving it, but they just chuck it in some random savings account that's not collecting anything. Look, you can't save your way to retirement. That's, mm-hmm. You can't save your way to f- your first home or, or to success anyway, right? Because you're going to get eaten alive by inflation, right? The returns you're going to get in your savings accounts is like peanuts, like less than 0.2% or whatever it is, right? Like it's, it's so tiny that like it's going to be worth less by just by holding it there. In fact, you're going to be losing money. Yeah. But it is a temporary stomping grounds to just kind of place your money so you have enough because you still need a down payment, right? So, but I would just say do a tax advantage, put into your RSPs. You have 15, 16 years to pay it back. I haven't paid mine back, so I'm slowly paying it back over the 16 years, right? Like that, I, I took it out like a long time ago, almost done anyway. But yeah, you just pay it back. Um, and it's the time value of money. Use that to your advantage, right? I'd rather have money now and take advantage of it than money later on because use your time to your advantage, right? So, um yeah make sure you just save that way it's probably the best thing to do and like i said you guys are still young you have a long horizon to save up and it'll come fast you know actually one of my other mentors told me that money is nothing but stored energy if you think about it that way Mm -hmm. right so you work hard you use your energy to make money right and then you spend that money to go on vacations and recharge so it's kind of like you're storing mm-hmm. energy, if, if that makes kind of sense, right? Right. So if you just hustle, hustle, hustle and build it up, right? And think of it as just like, anyway, whatever. Just build it up and then take that money and then we can use that to reinvest and make go. Right. So hopefully that answers your questions. Yeah. And But are you are you specifically talking about reinvesting into real estate though? Or are you talking about anything like stock market well, or whichever it is? Right? So I think in the real estate market, like, if it's your first home, 
you still you don't have to put twenty percent down. Like it's kind of like the normal thing that everybody thinks about, right? Yeah, you can get away with five five percent up to five hundred thousand, um, and ten percent up to the rest from five hundred thousand to a million. So really, if you're looking for uh, you know a million dollar place, then you're looking at seven and a half percent, right? Mm-hmm. Plus your actually no more than that because whatever the number works out to, right? So five percent on the first five, and then ten percent the remaining amount, um, and then. And then you have your closing costs and your CMHC insurance, mortgage insurance, things like that. So there are going to be hefty fees, but at the end of the day, you don't have to save up 20%. Um, your payments will be higher, obviously, because you're going to pay, you're going to borrow more. Um, but yeah. What was the question? Was that the question? <laughs> no, no, that, that, was, that was exactly it. Um, be, just because, let's say, when I think about uh, what you were talking about earlier with the rich get richer, um, and it's something that we see common, um, people can take out and then reinvest and buy more. What if, the, we're, for example, my parents are immigrants, right? Yeah. So we all come in, but we don't have anything to start with, right? Yeah. So it's a big benefit and you could see it in the generations. Um, you can look at your friends or whoever have parents that have lived in Canada for the first, they are the first generation. Mm-hmm. Um, they're already at a big advantage because or no the kids are at, at a big advantage oh, the second generation the second generation right because yeah now they have the money from your their parents house right right so my parents are immigrants here too yeah right? so i was i'm first generation here i came with nothing as well too so i built it up over the years i'm a little older than you can double your age pretty much almost right so think about the time that you have you still have time to build it up mm-hmm. um now if you think about where your parents are if like, you know, you have a head start on them if you think of it that way, right? Mm-hmm. Because now when you start buying your first place, then you can buy a second place after that later. I'm not saying tomorrow. I'm not saying next year. I'm saying eventually you can work towards that. And then from there, you'll use that asset to re-leverage and make more money. It's basically whoever has assets is going to be the ones that are winning, right? Maybe not in today's environment because the government's trying to take away that money out of the assets by raising borrowing costs. So they're bringing, basically, if less people can borrow money, that means you're taking a market away from people, right? So there's less buyers out there to be able to buy that asset. So by inherently, that means that assets can be worth less because there's less people buying it, mm-hmm. right? So that's what the current government's trying to do right now with raising interest rates. But it, over time, asset owners are the ones that win, not the ones that are saving, putting putting money, socking money away because that 30 grand, 100 grand, 50 grand, whatever you have saved up is going to be worth less and less and less. And it's going to be able to buy you less. It's not going to be worth less, I should say. It's going to be able to buy you less because everything else gets more expensive. But your money doesn't get more expensive. It's still the same, right? So that's why you can't save yourself to retirement or to savings. You got to start buying assets that are inflation-proof, such as real estate, such as stocks, crypto, things, whatever. Whatever just goes up in value because money's getting diluted and the currency is being debased. Yeah, so so what is your opinion on... Because they can't buy a place right away, right? So what do you do until that point? So obviously you already talked about saving in RRSPs, but you could still do some type of investing, whether it be like anything like gold or whatever it is. Sure. Um, is there any other tips in regards to that? Because what about all the people who feel like they're lagging behind because they can't invest in real estate? Right, because real estate is expensive. You got to yeah. come up with a thick, not 20%, but you still got to come up with a good chunk of money, right? Yeah. So um with RSPs, I guess the other thing is you still have to decide what you're going to invest in the RSPs. You can't just put an RSP and then expect it to like whatever. You can put in the in an index fund and it'll kind of go with inflation ish mm-hmm. ish. You know mm-hmm. who knows, right? Um, so what else would I say is you can always invest in like a real estate if you want to stay invested in real estate and you can't buy actual property and get control and title over it. You can buy a real estate investment trust. Yeah, you can buy into a fund, for example. You can buy into um, you know a big commercial fund out there that invests in different types of assets. You got to look up what they're buying, right? You can buy like, they buy like offices or they buy warehouses or they can buy like all commercial, like commercial plazas and apartment buildings and even condos, for example, that people that build condos. So you don't actually own title to the condo, but you can put in a minimum amount, which could be like whatever the share price is, mm-hmm. right? If it's that public, but you have zero control over it, right? Obviously, because it depends on the directors and the officers and the CEOs and stuff running the company. But ultimately, you can stay invested and ride the market that way. And have a lesser chunk of, um, and put less money in. In other words, no, that's perfect. Right? Yeah, because with ownership, there's a lot of expenses that are liabilities, right? And that's why Robert Kiyosaki says that uh, home, home owning a home is a liability. Property taxes, maintenance, repairs, all the stuff we have to do. I with see Kayla. it all the time with our <laughs> landlords. Yeah, I feel so bad sometimes for the amount of money that they put into these properties. Right, it's a lot of money, and it yeah. doesn't cover in rent. Like even what where we have at Millwood, for example, it's like losing money. Like I was telling you this morning. Mm-hmm. 
But the thing is, well, not Millwood because it's interest only payments, but generally regular, uh, like that's commercial property, by the way, guys. Um, but for residential properties, you're amortizing the mortgage because you have a 25 year amortization or a 30 year amortization or whatever you pick from the bank when you get your mortgage. So that basically means an amortization means it amortizes to zero, it means it goes down to zero. So it starts at 25 years, and by the end of the 25th year, it'll be down to zero, right? So as long as you are able to hold on to those payments, even though you're losing money out of pocket, even though you might be cash flow negative, you're still guaranteed to win because it's going to be paid down to nothing. Plus, it'll appreciate too, right? Generally. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you get ahead. You might not be able to own property right now, but don't get discouraged. There's other ways to do it. You can, like I said, you can buy a REIT, a real estate investment trust. You can invest into mortgages, like private mortgages, and get a, a mm. return. You won't own the property, so that's even worse than buying a REIT because REITs actually get to the, the earn the, the um, when you exit, when they sell the property, you get those dividends back, right? Right. Like you get the earnings back. So there's a bit of leverage there as well too. And um, yeah, when you own the asset, the banks think that it's a little more safe. It's, going to, it's worth something. So they'll lend you a multiples of how much that's worth. So in other words, if it's 20%, it's five times how much it's worth. 20% down, right? If it's 10% down, that's, what's that? 20, uh, sorry, 10 times amount of what it's worth. Or it's just an inverse relationship, right? Like yeah. one divided by, or sorry, 10 divided by 100, so all the way around, which is 10 times. So if you think about it that way, right? The banks will lend you 10 times what they think it's worth, what they appraise it to be worth. So if the banks believe in the asset, you should too. You know, like they won't lend that on stocks. Good point. Right? Never thought of it like that before. Because if you try to ask them to borrow money on starting a business, they might lend you like a portion of what they think your revenue is going to be based on your business plan, right? Maybe. And you have to have an experienced track record of it. But if you're coming there with nothing, they're not going to give you anything. They're going to just shoot you out the door, right? But if you have a uh, real estate, they believe in the real estate. So they'll do it. That's amazing. See, these, these are the glitches that I was talking yeah, about right. that, that people need to learn. Okay, so what kind of real questions do you have? Like, what were like what positions? I'm not saying getting too personal, but um, like, I, I guess the question is, where do you get invested in real estate if you don't have the money to get in real estate? So we talked about that really quickly. Yeah, that was is mine. there like a plan where you can get ahead based on that? You know, the best thing to do is to really save as much as possible. So if you're living at home right now, continue doing that. If it's not too crazy for your commutes and stuff like that, right? Because I know it is, and it gets frustrating. <laughs> and there's a certain point where. It's not all about investment. Like you want to live, you know what I mean? You want to live downtown with your friends and your peers and stuff. You want to have your own independence. So you want to be outside of home. So there's a cost to that. Just know that there's cost. But you can minimize that cost by getting roommates, you know, getting a significant other, right? I'm not saying jump in a relationship, but I'm saying get a, a roommate at least, at the very least, right? If, you have, if you're fortunate enough to have the down payment saved up and you can buy a place and then lease out a portion of it to someone else and have them offset some of your cost, that could work too. Maybe you partner with um, an investor, which could be your family or could be a friend or mm. whatever that wants to just invest in it, but not actually live there. So you maybe pay a little bit of the carrying, a little more of the carrying cost, but they're invested in the equity with you, right? Uh, Government of Canada has a first time program where they'll invest the equity with you. And I think their, their upside is capped at 8%. And their downside is also capped at 8%, something like that. You got to look it up, but basically you can, I think they can invest, what is that? 15%, 20%? I should know this. I'm not I sure that one. It's a quick yeah. Google, but um, <laughs> they can invest. It's a home equity program or something like that where they actually invest along with you. So they'll help you offset some of your down payment. Oh, actually, I think you actually right? mentioned this one to me. Yeah. Yeah. I got to look it up. I haven't worked with first time home buyers in a while. Um, but yeah, that's an option as well too, right? Yeah. So I guess what you're saying is um, the biggest thing for, for us the youth. Um, not saying that you're not young, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's to really save aggressively. Uh, yeah. For the first bit. Yeah. Control your expenses. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't save your way to success, in other words. So, yeah. But save with the mindset of jumping onto that ship. Yeah. That appreciation ship. Right? And I don't know where the market's going to go. I can't say it's going to appreciate forever. It can't only go up. But I'm saying, if you have that down payment to work on, you can use leverage to your advantage to help you grow mm -hmm. as well, too. Because by nature of it, cash is going to be worth and worth less because the government's printing money. Like there's no way around it. They're going to continue to uh, do quantitative easing because they're spending more than they actually make uh, as revenue. So they got to make up that difference by printing money. And by printing money, you're just diluting the currency, mm -hmm. right? It's like, imagine putting like a, a vodka soda or something, right? And you have like a shot of vodka and you're throwing in more soda. Yeah, more right? soda. And then you drink half of it and you throw in more soda. That's what they're doing to your money right now. 
but you need to have some vodka to get ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just continue saving that vodka. You know what I mean? Well, put it in clubbing terms. It's so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check out your age. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have any questions in regards to that? Or uh, Ken was just kind of uh, answering all my questions. I had rapid fire. Keep going. So, keep going. Rapid fire. Rapid. Um, I mean, I was looking to move down into the city. Yeah. Um, I didn't really take in how bad traffic was on the way here. It sucks. Um, like, is it still a good idea moving into the city? Like, given how... Can I talk about your personal situation on yeah, here? Sure, yeah, okay, yeah. so if you're coming from Milton, mm. you got to look at how much your monthly gas expenses are. Not yeah. even just gas, maintenance, car insurance, too much. car itself. Add That's that like rent in itself. That alone is rent, exactly, right? Way too much. So what if you got rid of your car and you live downtown? And okay, if it nets up to be the same, you know what you're going to earn back? You're going to earn your sanity back. <laughs> it's stressful driving in downtown Toronto, especially that far. Like, mm -hmm. How long does it drive? Like over an hour, right? Over an hour. So each way, that's like two and a half hours maybe you're going to get back, if not, if not three hours. You know, sure, you can use that three hours and be productive and listen to audiobooks and podcasts. You know, I, like my cousin once told me when I was growing up and I was trying to, like I was your age, I was trying to figure my life out. He said, books are great to get that fundamental theory. But yeah. podcasts give you that, and magazine, actually it was back then it was magazines because it wasn't, um, podcasts weren't really that popular, right? Mm. Actually, MP3 wasn't even invented back then. Funny enough, <laughs> MP4, MP3. Um, but yeah, so basically he said that uh, magazines and newspapers give you the current events, but you have to have, have that foundational knowledge first. So you kind of mix up both of them, right? It's nice to get a quick perspective of what podcasters think, like us or whatever, you have a little bit of their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Books kind of like drone on and on and on, right? But you can get a mix of both. So you can use that three hours for that, or you could save your sanity and enjoy downtown living, right? The problem is living down here and you speak to Chevy, you know, like your expenses get a little bit more because you want to spend more, right? Because now you're True. in front of everything, right? Now, you know, Friday night comes, your boys, yeah. go, let's go to the bar or whatever, and you're going to go there. Cannot go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're already here. Why not? <laughs> right? Just got nothing else to do. So um, guys, really when you're starting out, really it's all about delayed gratification as well too. The longer you can wait, the better. It'll build your... Not even like the the actual money, but the mental stamina they have to bench press. You know, it's like working out, right? The more you do it, the more you exercise that muscle and you build that muscle up of restraint and holding back and waiting till later until another day when you're ready. So you make good decisions that way. No, so that's good. for your situation, move downtown, enjoy <laughs> living here. Just don't spend too much. That's all. And get rid of your car. Yeah, get rid of the car part. That's the... That's the tough part for me. That's the tough I know, part. Tough. I take a scooter like, going like to work. Like I said, right? It, well, exactly it, right? Like you actually, Neil, you've done, you done a really good job taking the scooter, just walking to work, saving on transit and things mm -hmm. like that. Like flexing that mental stamina is really good, right? Because every little dollar, like, you know, they always say that joke about avocado toast and like millennials and coffee and all that kind of stuff, right? It's not about the actual, like you can't save $5 a day just to like be rich, but it's saving that when you face that decision, hey, do you want to go pop up? You guys want to share a bottle at the club? you know, 300 bucks or whatever later, you're like, nah, I'd rather not, you know? Because like, you have that stamina already, you know what I mean? That's what I was talking about earlier uh, when you were talking about like the whole compounding effect with um, with just podcasts and just um, making the right financial decisions, whatever it is, even if it's like 1%, 5% of your check mm -hmm. um, because now you're getting yourself into that practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I, with your example being, Oh, you wanna you wanna split this bottle this time? No, or um, am I gonna go out today Is, or whatever? Am I gonna order a big thing? Mm -hmm. No, I'll just um, cook myself today. Yeah, whatever. And it I'll is. Come out afterwards. Come yeah. for a drink after and get a glass of water or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, 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 just joking. Get a beer or something. But whatever. You know what I mean? Like, um, and it could start with five percent first originally of your paycheck, and then as you start building that and you start getting used to that, as your income increases too, maybe you increase that and you keep your living expenses mm -hmm. the same. You know, I was in that Gary, um, that mastermind with Gary Keller, and he basically said, "You can increase your living expenses. It's perfectly fine because we all need to enjoy a little bit, right?" But he says, "Make sure you build a financial moat around your yourself before you increase those expenses because the market can shift really quickly." Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, save the three month buffer, save the six month buffer. If you didn't have any income and you could, could you survive for another six months? If you had that, then sure, then you can start increasing your expenses. Then you can go put a little more towards savings or you can go buy a car again. You know what I mean? So it's a bit of a delayed gratification, gratification. Get rid of your car, hustle, hustle, hustle. And when you get used to it, go get another car after it. Get a nicer car. You know what I mean? Can't argue with that. Right? And in the meanwhile, <laughs> if you're down here, you don't need it. Like you can 
walk everywhere. We can scoot everywhere. We can transit bicycle. everywhere. I rode bicycle. The bicycle. Yeah. The other day it was great. Stay in your lane. Make sure you stay in your lane. Don't go outside. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> it was kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there's bike lanes and stuff. Like if you're as long as you're safe, and you're not like an a hole about riding in the city and trying to be like a car. Like I don't care who's right or wrong. Just like be safe. Don't get hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so bikes are fine. Um, you know, you can take Ubers if you really want to. Ubers get a little more expensive per cost yeah. per trip, but ultimately it'll still be cheaper than owning a car in downtown Toronto. True. Plus don't forget you have to pay for parking too, right? Which is a lot. If you find parking. If you can find it, yeah. exactly, right? <laughs> and it's just supply and demand at the end of the day. That's why it's so expensive. So hopefully I gave you some tips. Oh, that was that was beautiful. Else? Yeah. <laughs> that was a blast. So where are we gonna start? What are we all gonna do? What are we gonna do first? What's We're the gonna first invest thing? in ourselves. Invest in your education, your knowledge. Neil, what are you gonna do? Um, I need to actually start like physically investing more into um, assets. Yeah. Yeah. That's, or, that's, or, or saving your money. Yeah. Pay off your debts if you have any and invest it into like something where you eventually have enough chunk of change to be able to invest into an asset and buy an asset mm-hmm. or buy a fund that buys assets even for that mm-hmm. matter, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. O- I'm always grateful that I actually finished um, paying off school. Yeah. Nice. But uh, then I replaced that with paying rent. So right. <laughs> but you're paying half because you're splitting. Yeah, it, right? I'm you splitting I mean? it. So that's that's smart. So you guys hopefully never break up. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> just like always like try your best to save as much as possible yeah. from doing that. Mm-hmm. Right. JP, what are you going to do? Get rid of my car and uh, <laughs> it would be right. and invest in real estate funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't get rid of your car. No, yeah, don't do it now. Out. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till the time is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But get a roommate. That probably helps a lot. Yeah. Just delayed gratification at the end of the day. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned to the next episode. If you guys have any tips on what to talk about, just give us a shout. Shoot us a DM or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye. Add it up.